Hello and welcome to the second day of the Monkey Bubble European Regional Invitational. In this tournament, 16 teams have heeded the call to entertain you all. They want to go from beginning all the way to winning. I am the Olamancer, running with you through this fantastic day of competitive Overwatch. And with me on the stroll of Suave is the gentleman of general chat and the lord of lobby, the count of competitive, the man of class. Classy, how are you doing today, my friend? Well, after such a perfect description of who I am, who I am pertaining to be, and who I, everything agrees I am, I'm going to do even better than I already was. It's going to be a great match today. Actually, it's going to be four matches today on our stream, and there's going to be other streams as well. If, you, if your favorite team or the team you want to watch is not playing in our schedule, just check the schedule. It should be, uh, in, in even in our pot, should be below the stream as well. Just check it out. Might be there. Uh, no, it is there, 100%. I've put it there myself. We're going to have uh, Caster's Nest and Nordquin also doing streams, so you can check out if they maybe do a team that you want to see. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's all you need to do. Just make sure you're where you need to be. Yeah, that is right. That is right. And let's have a bit of a reminder of the people who made this po uh, possible, apart from, of course, the Monkey Bubble and our uh, other, uh, you know, our other casting friends from Nordquin and the Caster Nest. Uh, the tour tournament is partly brought to you by insights.gg. You can get an account today uh, to, uh, uh, you know, do an analysis of your VOD, your reviews uh, of uh, everything you've done and whether or not they are good, stupid or very good. Um, so, you know, uh, get some stuff in there. There should be a link down there. Um, you know, they were kind enough to help us out with this one. So, you know, at yeah. least I thought we should mention it. Right. Oh, so... Yeah. The game, the game, the game. Let's get into the good stuff. We are looking at oh, Nocturnal yeah. versus Fourth Dimension. Talk us through this. Well, specifically Nocturnal Aspects. Uh, you know, I don't know, don't exactly know for sure if they have other teams going as well, but they uh, they use their full name uh, against again, like you said, against Fourth Dimension. We saw Fourth Dimension quite a bit on our uh, on our own stream yesterday. Uh, they 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 won their first game against uh, that was against Banshee Esports. It was a relatively close one. Um, and then for the mention, actually, no, they lost their first game against Banshee Esports, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think and so. then they went down and they beat Clockwork Vendetta to throw them out of the tournament. So that was a bit of a surprise to everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, and now, now they're here. So they're they're in the lower bracket. This lower bracket match. The loser of this will have to go home, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, for the mention, showing up very good. Uh, a team that wasn't initially uh, going to be part of the tournament, but they had to step in last second. Really happy that they did that. Uh, and they're showing up. I mean, they're doing well. It's not like they were eliminated straight away. Uh, same thing goes for Nocturnal. They were were a, a part of the original 16 as well. So they they were, uh, I mean, they've been doing doing work a little bit. Uh, but they've also had a little bit of a struggle. So that's why they're in the lower bracket, obviously. Talking about the players, though, that's where we're really going to be looking at what, what's going to happen. Um, there's been a lot of good players so far having shown themselves on, on both of these teams. Uh, fourth dimension uh, players are definitely worth noting are uh, are players like Doggo and HM. They've been really popping off both on the flex support and the DPS role. Uh, and on Nocturnal, I mean, Yulo has been one of the tank prodigies in the EU ladder, uh, as far as we understand. So we're going to have a hot main tank matchup. But Ooh. what are we going to see first, Ali? Because it looks like it's going to be Busan. Oh, it is going to be Busan, and it is going to be in open field straight away. So a lot of room for those two tanks to maneuver, a lot of room for those teams to maneuver. I am really, really excited to uh, to see what these teams are getting into. Uh, they are assembling their teams. Uh, so are we going to see May Reaper on this one? What do you think? I think May Reaper has actually seen not that much of play lately. It's been more rotating towards the Reaper Doomfist, and a lot of these teams have actually opted uh, in this tournament so far to play a Farah next to a Doomfist rather than the Reaper. Um, because, you know, obviously if you play against a Doomfist Reaper, they don't have that ranged DPS to really deal with you. Uh, yeah. And that means that, you know, it's it's going to be going to be very hard to deal with that Farah, and she gets a lot of value. It's just a little bit less of that direct impact so it's not a doomfist punch just trying to kill someone but that's why they still run the doomfist so you can kill that person straight away still yeah and it's not easy to just uh, run in with a hit scan on this thing just simply because you have uh, the problem of a double shield so you know you can try and kill a pharah but you know what else are you going to do on this one but let's see what's going to happen here as we see xhm in the air and is trying to get a couple of kills in there first blood is drawn by hulo on that very very nice orissa right there great matchup in there 
Now we are looking at Hota, who is trying to clear up the high ground as his team is just pushing forward on that. Backbone looking for a target, finds something, but has to move away there for a second. <laughs> Finds a support though, luckily, because that looked hairy for him for a second. Now, Nipatok trying to get that Barra and that Mercy out of the sky. Remember, a lot of damage coming out from that Sigma, even though it has been nerfed just a very slight bit. So, these teams are trading blows. Um, you know, the matchups are more or less what we can expect. So, what are the win conditions here for each of these teams, Classy? I mean, you're basically looking at HM having to do enough work in the... In the well, in a shorter time frame, because the sustain of that team is going to be a bit less. They don't have as much mobility without the Lucio, and they're also looking at a little bit less of the instant burst that a Reaper Doomfist necessarily provide. That being said, they can run around the enemy a little bit more since they have that aerial attack damage. The only problem is they can't do really well points, and there goes Backbone. Yup, Backbone already going out, the Coalescence very early in there. We see a lot of attack bubbles being thrown by these uh, by these Moiras over there, because they really worked, but now it is the combo! XA German out to clean up, and this should change the real estate. Very well done here, a double and a triple to clear this out. Yeah, HM showing up with the Barrage to clean everything up, and that's what they really need to do, because they can't really go for the sustain fight. Uh, that's really the territory of Nocturnal right now, so... They, they're, they're not going to be able to be as good on the ground war. It's just they're trying to sustain on the ground war while they're firing their team to get work done. Yeah, that is, that, that's right. Now the ultimate is coming in here. And once again, it is Hota trying to get Eden off his back. That is a bit of a theme here in this entire matchup. Now fighting over on the point. The capture is real and we see a bit of a change over there. Yeah, it looks like they're... Uh... They're gonna try something else here. Uh, obviously, no, they're not. I thought they were may maybe we're gonna because they used a few ultimates there. But it looks like they're gonna run it with the same thing. Point has flipped, like you said. Pharmacy is taking a little bit of an off angle though. This is what they're good at, trying to basically ignore the shields for a large part. You see it all really yeah, That's right, and now it is uh, the ultimate coming in for Eden. He tries to find something else, but the bongos can't get it done, but jumps up there. Ruby with the help on the coalescence. And once again, Nocturnal, very dominant here in this first round. Yeah, you're truly doing a good job, and I really want to hand it to Nipahog because without those, uh, without those shields, really trying to just block up everything HSM wants to do, there would have probably already been three barrages, and so far they've only used one. And yes, they have the second, but it's going to be a very desperate fight to get the come back. Yep, that's right. Now Hota fighting Backbone. Backbone goes up there with the Meteor Strike. Finds Doggo. Overtime is running, though. So it is time for Four Dimension to do something. Put up or shut up. There you go. HM finds a target right there with the ultimate. Has some damage in with the rest, but it is a bit underwhelming in terms of the end result right there. And the first round has been taken by Nocturnal. Nocturnal Aspect showing up very good in this first round, really showing that they can deal with that Farah in the sky. And I mean that, like we said, that's kind of what we're looking at right now with the May, not the May Reaper, but the Doomfist Reaper. They're working very well on the ground and they need to somehow either sustain the Farah damage or just do better damage in the same time frame that the Farah does. And they're able to really both mitigate the damage that HM was doing on the Farah. Yeah. Through, well, beautiful shields of Nipahog and what Nipahog is doing in general, but also just to keep doing their own damage without being phased too much. And I think that really comes down to good Sigma play here, right? Yeah, good Sigma play is key in these high-level matchups. We've seen some crazy, uh, crazy Sigma plays. Uh, yesterday, we've seen them. Uh, we've seen them actually in the Euro Cup uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we can see that Sigma has established himself as a absolute monster as an off tank right here. At least you know in the hands of the real people. Hota coming in from their side, throwing in the rock there, and finds a little bit of splash damage directly on the side. Kumo, she's uh, pulling back and trying to keep the team alive and together. They have to pull back here for a second here on the fourth dimension. So, uh, you know, once again, we see uh, that Nocturnal have, you know, all the right mark crossed here. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just they're holding them back into that door frame to take the point first, first again. And now we're in this mirror matchup state where we already saw that Nocturnal was able to deal with the Farah. And now they're dealing with this as well so far. Oh, as I say that though, Backbone goes down. This is a good opening of the fight. And Fourth Dimension is going to run through this, it seems.
Exactly, fourth dimension now uh, are going is straight for the point, being held up here. A slight bet by Dollar, but Dollar goes down. Dollar, Dollar bill, y'all. Yeah, I mean, Dollar, just, you know, the, the lone Lucio trying to survive. Actually, the Reaper does get out because Eden wasn't quite part of that fight. And that might have been the, the main issue there. They just sped past the Reaper and then Eden was sort of left alone there. It's like, oh, I'm going to try and shoot the Lucio in the back, but that's about all they could do. And the rest of the fighters ensued on point. Exactly, but now he is Ruby with another coalescence and once again Nocturnal running him there trying to get that point back because that is a very very close time up above sight. Now a nip off with a double kill though taking down the support and the main tank immediately. Backbone with a double coming in. Nocturnal back in control of this fight of the point. Team kill. Team kill and that's always a nice horn to hear. Just you know the, the, the quick cleanup, meaning that you get it, and that means that you didn't only win a team fight, you won it quickly enough that the horn went off in the first place. I don't know exactly what the time frame is, but it's not long. It's like 10 or 12 seconds. So that means you're really, really good on that. It's before the respawn time comes down. Okay. Yeah. Ready, though. Oh, and coming in, HM, coming in there with the ultimate. Doesn't find any targets, thanks to a great sound barrier that came in to save the team. Very well done here by Dollar, who was just waiting for something like that to happen. XHM couldn't get it done there with the Death Blossom. But now, Beastock finds Eden and goes down immediately to a coalescence that comes out of Doggo. Doggo firing the laser all the way through. And it does look like fourth dimension isn't going to take this lying down they are pushing back up there v-stock on julo julo down nip at Hawk following it so no more tanks here for the nocturnals yeah nocturnal doing a good job so far once again they're they are already in the lead on one stage and now they're just trying to get eden as a last pick but Eden's doing quite a bit of damage before that can take it takes down um yeah, okay, they got it. <laughs> Fourth Dimension gets the point back. They have a little bit of momentum to climb, though. They do have a quite a bit of ultimate advantage here, so they could very well stall it out for a little bit longer. But we're going to get into a place where Nocturnal, they play their cards right, they could have a better ult economy. That pool was beautiful. Yeah, that pool was absolutely devastating. And going down is like Gem, who has to jump there. Now, though, the Meteor Strike fight. Come on, Skumo. She is down. There is nothing you can do but Hota. Points Julo, Feastock following up on Ruby, and it does look as if Fourth Dimension is firmly in control of this one. Well done. Yeah, very. I mean, they, they needed to use a little bit more than they might have wanted to. All three ultimates that they had were gone, but now they're coming up on the coalescent. The sound barrier is a little bit off, but so it is for is it for Dala and Ruby, um, and then HM is close to the Death Blossom, so they're still looking very good because they made. A nocturnal aspect use a few other ultimates as well and that's what you want you want to keep that economy on your side exactly you want that advantage because that gives you more things in your toolbox in the toolbox though nipper dog is looking like it's going down but gets healed up just very well now it is time for nocturnal to push it in because otherwise that big advantage is not going to save them anymore ruby in trouble has to pull back coalescence coming out coming out from doggo as well and doggo is the first one to laser someone down with this one nipperdog already down corn finds eden and for now the body advantage still on fourth dimension but backbone with that double backbone looking for number three right here finds it and it is nocturnal who are coming out on top of this one at least as it looks right now now coming in the meteor strike the meteor strike and it is a doomfist versus doomfist matchup backbone low here though goes down because doggo was there to help out body three of Still three on three, and now the ultimate for Eden. Finally, free stock goes down, and it is still not over. This team fight is absolutely going all the way into the overtime for both teams. Fourth dimension looking like they could clear it up, but Nocturnal have more bodies on the point right now, and they should be taking the real estate. Very long, very drawn out fight, which is not over just yet, as it is a uh, backbone still coming back in there. And Backbone just keeps coming back in as that Doomfist. But the main thing that they lost eventually on 4th Dimension is their Moira. And yes, Doggo is coming back now. And it can do a lot of work with that Coalescence. I don't know if it could, it could be enough. The Reinhardt comes back, comes back in from Hota, though. 
HM and uh, and Kumo are on there as well, but Kumo is going down. Feastock finding backbone, but immediately goes down to Ruby. So still Nocturnal way in the lead of this one. Corn cannot hold this out. The only one who could still sustain them is HM. Has to pull back, and that is that. Nocturnal takes the first map. Nocturnal. I mean, they just show. I would say they just showed up a little bit better overall. They obviously dealt with the uh, with the fire really well. And then when you came to the matchup, it was relatively even. It was definitely not a a, a, a 100 to zero by any means, obviously. But no. you can just see that there's these plays coming in. I, th I think the DPS right now on the side of um, of Nocturnal are generally making a, a more consistent plays. Yes, you saw this play of the game from Feast.com come out, which was a very beautiful one, granted. But generally speaking, I feel that especially Backbone and even Eden also doing a lot of work. I do want to point out that Doggo has been a very stand-up mm -hmm. player so far in Fourth Dimension. Has been doing a lot of work with coalescences, but also as a general, like vanilla Moira, as what we like to call it, has been in the right position to do the right of healing, good resource management, able to get uh, the extra damage in that a Moira needs to most of the time as well. So I'm very happy to see Doggo play like this. He's been in the in the in this in this level of the scene for quite a while now, and yeah. uh, it's probably just waiting for that break. I think he was actually with HSL just uh, in the uh, Contenders Trials last season, uh, and then didn't go through with the HSL roster. And eventually, is now going to the Gauntlet, uh, but he, he's been around. He's definitely been around. So uh, yeah, hoping to see more of that. But that being said, though, I, I think it's been a it's been a fun map so far. And Control is always that first map of the series that. It, it, it can set the tone, but it can also be very misleading to what we see. Because we saw Fourth Dimension win the first map against Banshee yes, yesterday, and then they went down three maps after that. So we don't know if Control is maybe their best mode, but we're yeah. going to see what happens when they go to Icon Vault. Yeah, no, that is that that is right. I mean, some some uh, teams are just a lot better on control, just basically due to the fact that they have this very brawly style, which is, by the way, something that I'm really liking on Fourth Dimension at this point. Because you know, whenever they rush out of a gate or onto a point, they go hard, they go in as a group, they death ball it up. Uh, you know, there is no, there is no, not a lot of crazy flanking, but that's not the meta at this point. Uh, the only one uh, able to do this at this point is the Doomfist uh, in 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 this kind of setup. But you know, whenever they do it, they are very coordinated. Their shot calling seems to be very good. Their target calling seems to be very good because whenever they set their point on, you know, having someone die, usually that is happening. But you yeah. know, Nocturnal uh, are, you know up to the task of uh, keeping that from happening and they have done so in the first map now on icon uh any changes any surprises here on the matchups on the on the picks well I mean, we, we don't really see any change in players i mean they both teams obviously are allowed to have substitutes they're not coming in right now um and we could already see that right now it looks like H is, uh, hm is going to be on that far eye again because it, it works there it, and it didn't work obviously on uh, on busan like the first map uh first point the second point was just too enclosed for afara it's logical that they're going to go back to it because it is has been their strategy the question is whether it will work out for them or not because there's no hit skin on the defense but this time i think the open range is just a little bit better and it works a little bit different than city Center. and speaking of open range it is hm already looking for a target and almost finding the first one right there kumo coming in there as the mercy on the uh, uh, on the backside of hm and they are already finding the first target hotel are down so that does spell trouble for the fourth dimension right there as hm get locked out of the sky for a second back one with a double kill and you know that was the first push um for now yeah, you gotta sort of be kicking yourself or your HM because you saw those work with some backbone. It was a sliver of HP left and they just couldn't get that last splash damage in. Had that not happened, backbone doesn't get those two kills. You might have to already have half the points. But right now, they're just gonna keep on pelleting those rockets in from the top. The old situation is relatively even, so I guess that's still a good place. Oh, uh, nice fight right in there. Beatsog already goes down. And uh, now, backbone in control of this, looking for that next target. Jumping right in is the rest of the team though. The farmers, he's still up in the air, gets a bit it gets a bit held together. And it looks as if Kumo's in trouble. Very low right there. A hold already down. And speaking of hold, clockwork. Uh, sorry, clockwork. Nocturnal still in control of this one. Someone was talking about the clockwork vendetta uh, 06, and I just got my team team names uh, you know wrong. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that just happens sometimes, you know, you can't really, uh, you can't really do anything about that. But hey, backbone is down now. This is your chance. 
bees dog. You can go in. You can go in with that power. I know it's gonna punch you out of the sky this time around. And no, they're going hard already. They are going hard too. Coalescence has already spent. Ruby has fired the one. Doggo fired the other one. But now it is the fourth dimension who are really looking for some targets. Backbone on his way back though. Dollar has the sound barrier. Has to, has to push someone away. Hasn't used it just yet though. Kumo gets torn back up and fourth dimension in control of this one. This should be turning around any time now. HM points even before he, before he can do some damage right there. Very well done. And immediately going long there, trying to get that bridge already in their own control. And that looked hairy for a second there for Yulo. Uh, this is going to be a playground for power. As long as there's no hitskin on the other side, you can just fly around in the air wherever you want. And you can dodge most of the fire that comes at you. Yeah, you see Nipa Hog is trying to get that shield in the way. It's so <laughs> difficult right now. Fees Dog hasn't ever escaped with the Meteor Strike. Will he get value? Oh, oh no, it doesn't really look, look like it. He found his death in Eden, who was just waiting for him to come down there. So that was uh, that was a bit less than expected. Um, we still do see Nocturnal in control of this, even though the payload is on the way. Um, with uh, HM already back and spawn, but you know, the spawn is immediately there, so that shouldn't be a problem. No, they're gonna be right there with the ult situation. Look at that. Like, Beast Dog doesn't have it, but everyone else on both teams has their ultimate. And Backbone just goes in deep with that meteor strike because he can do it. Oh, there's the old HM already running it. Eden firing off the Death Blossom as well to coalescence it. So, you know, it looked like both teams were ready for it, and both teams are immediately just rushing it in there. I don't know if that was such a good idea, but Fourth Dimension still has more ultimate than Nocturnal. Well, they didn't have that before, so they just drew out everything that they needed to draw out. And now they're gonna have, they're gonna run into. Yes, they got that run into the sound barrier, but they should be able to overpower that sound barrier with their coalescent supercharger and their forbidden blocks if they time it right. Oh, oh and speaking of forbidden blocks, that's coming up. That's coming down with the sound barrier in mid air. Takes care of that. Hota had hoped for a lot more value of that. Now eight percent with a Lucio behind. A doggo, a dollar makes it out of there and closes that deal off. HM is up there together with Kumo still trying to find that off angle that off angle is getting a lot of value but the rest of the team doesn't really go any way further forward backbone very aggressive here very cheeky has to run away and now finally goes down yeah, honestly, what, what's happening a lot for Nocturnal, which, which are doing very well, they're capitalizing on the lack of the backline uh, because there's no, there's only one DPS that can really deal, and Peace Dog is being very aggressive. They can consistently see him into the backline, and it's working very well. Peace Dog already down now, it's going to be even easier for them to just run around and kill everything. Yeah, Jula is just holding control and showing that the right angle means everything to a good Orisa like he is. Ruby finds Hota Ruby, closing it out on Doggo as well with the double and the coalescence. And Eden, for some reason, is using his shotguns to fire up in this sky. Um, <laughs> but, you know, no other targets about, so I guess that's something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't really do that right now. Fee's dog going over to the hit scan though, and HM stays on the far. I mean, they have a minute and a half left, so it's a good time to swap if you're going to. But the McCree, I think, guess they just want to deal with Backbone coming in consistently. Yeah, that is right. Eden already has another Death Blossom. Doesn't need it, though, for the double kill right there. Going into the back and trying to find Corn, but Corn already downed by a finding Backbone, or Backbone finding him, depending on your personal situation right there. So, still in control, Nocturnal. It is a bit one-sided ever since the turnover of that uh, that first cap point. Uh, yeah. Let's hope that Fourth Dimension can find uh, some trick in their book, because they're going to need it by now. And then just use the two flankers and one is baiting out the flash and then he gets and out. And there it is, it's the ultimate coming in, but HM saw that, fights Ooh. that quadra kill and finds Ruby's setup. Fourth Dimension pulled the trick out of the book and Eden was trying to get in there with the Death Blossom and they just turned it around on them. Well done and that payload now moving out. Yeah, it's really one of those things where it was about time. You know, they kept consistently having that old advantage and just not being able to use them. So it, it's good that they got it out. It would have been really depressing if they had the old advantage all the time and just couldn't be able, weren't able to use them. So, but now they're just gonna run straight to point here on Nocturnal side. Gravitic Flux is huge though. Oh yeah, that is. But also the sound barrier is coming in right there. So not as huge as it could have been. Very well done here, Feastock. Now on the McCree, trying to actively get a. 
a stop to HM and Kumo. HM already saw that and switched to a Doomfist. So no more Farah in the sky. Uh, we are looking at the bridge fight in a second right now, but the overtime wick is already running. So time for fourth damage to pull it out of the hat. HM finds Kulo, gets Nip and Hawk there as well. Dugo on Dollar and fourth dimension are running and rolling now that they are running and rolling they don't seem to want to stop at this one no they don't but they're gonna have run now they're gonna run into the situation where they now they have used all their ultimates and they don't have anything left and there's gonna be especially a coalescence from ruby coming out and backbone's meteor strike which they have not been able to deal with so well yeah, that's right. And Korn is just making a lot of room right there. Always just there where he is needed. Jumps in there. Kumo gets HM back in there, but immediately goes down to Eden. Eden with the double. Hota falls down, and this is looking bad for the fourth dimension. The Valkyrie is out, but that doesn't really help you when Backbone and Yulo are looking at you. Round one complete just before the second cap point. I mean, it's, it's a decent progress. It's often a place where the cart will stop on Iconwald. Uh, and it's still, obviously, after what happened, as soon as they cap point A, as long as they were stalled under that door, this is probably as much as they could have hoped for like, after that situation. Of course, you'd rather get the second checkpoint and then go into third, but uh, it, 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 was, it was likely going to end somewhere over here anyways in that situation. So, yeah. I mean, they got there, almost. So this is about <laughs> the place where you would sort of say, this is where you hold them. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the fire to come out on defense again. It's really likely that's going to happen. HM has been really good on it, but showed up on the Doomfist in the end as well. So it's a little bit of one of those, like, do, do you do you need to play the fire because they play around it very well? Or would you rather say, because we're playing defensive, we'd rather have a little bit more of that ground support? Uh, yeah. I don't know. We do see that Feast Dog is probably going to go over to the McCree. So they're going to go and continue that trend where they use the McCree to deal with the flankers. And what I, I guess that what you were... Yeah, no, go ahead. What I, what, what I wanted to ask you before we jump into the next round and into what is going to happen, uh, yeah. how did that hold take so long? Uh, I, was say, I was saying earlier that I thought the fourth dimension was a very brawly team, so I would expect them to, you know, just be able to burst out of that one uh, quite easily. What what, sure. what happened with that hold? Well, I mean, I mean so, so essentially what... I alluded to it a little bit already. So because you have HM in the sky, your ground presence is a lot weaker. So the ability for flankers to get behind you and do things like Eden and Backbone were doing constantly is way stronger. And Eden and Backbone, even when these dogs switched over to the McCree, were really good at baiting out the flash and then having the other go in. Also, I think Backbone is doing a great job at Doomfist, really recognizing that the only thing you have to do is get in and then use your third ability to always get out. Don't try and get a kill with it, because oh. even if you do, you'll it would not be worth it. Yeah, he jumped in there, found the rock, and was able to get out there nonetheless. So that really sounds to uh, uh, shows to how good your healers are at that point. Stunned out there now, though, has to pull back. Uh, in control right now, though, is uh, is fourth dimension. He jam finds backbone in that little hallway, and they are not about to give up. He's dark, finds Ruby on there, finds Eden as well, is in trouble, but manages to right click his way out of trouble. Well done there on the first attack. And that was the fourth dimension I wanted to see. Yeah, fourth dimension, I mean, they, they look to be more of a defensive team. I think the problem that Nocturnal is going to have here is that they're not going to be able to do as e be as easy on the flanks as they are on the defense. Because there's not that much room for them to maneuver in before they get through this choke, and even then. And there's the barrage already. It doesn't actually get anything. Oh, that's that's good. I mean, good, you know, good kinetic grasp there Ooh. from the ball. And there is Backbone. Backbone finding Feast Dog right there immediately. Okay, HM looking up uh, through the sky, trying to find an angle past that Sigma. Doesn't really find the value he was hoping for. And the payload has been freed. And now it is roaring towards the next point. Yeah, they're doing a really doing a really great job so far and obviously they have like five minutes now to get to point b which usually should be enough but we've seen how how long you can hold an icon mold especially if you get close to that gate the respawn advantage is just so punishing for the for the attack yeah that is that is right the respawn the respawn advantage is something that can make or break your game which is why you you see a lot of these teams actually picking around them but right now there's a lot of things going on a coalescence coming out 
out here for Fourth Dimension, who are desperate to hold their front line. A death point, Eden right there, and Kumo gets feast off right back up. A backbone jumping into the back line. Moira knows how to get out of that. A backbone immediately jumps back in there. Dollar with that double there. Hota is going down to the support for the Nocturnals. I really like Dollar's movement, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Dolla able to, he's still not dead. Fizok, oh, Fizok finally finds it. Fizok has been a little bit quiet today so far. Has been really showed up yesterday. A lot of his pigs, both the Doomfist and the Three, the Bastion, whatever they played. Uh, and hasn't really found his, his groove yet so far, it seems. So hoping that they uh, they get that going soon. Because uh, they really need it at this point. Maybe oh, we'll see do. a nice Hightning come out. Well, I pretty much hope so. I mean, looking at three minutes and the time bank, there's a lot of chance here for that high noon to save it out. But Beastock is already down. Back down already with a double. Eden from the side as well. And this doesn't look good for fourth dimension because Eden has been able to just go into that back line from the one side. On the other side is Backbone. And that's how you park your car. Uh, it, it, it's very similar to the way they played when they were on the defense and just go around the enemy team and deal with it. <laughs> it's just kind of kind of what happens. Eden is always in the back line in some way, shape or form. And it was a little bit harder on the first point. You definitely saw them struggle there a little bit, but it wasn't quite where they needed it to be. Yep, no, that is that is right. And XHM here with that great breakout just, uh, just seconds after... Uh, or seconds before the overtime wake was there. It was a beautiful, beautiful setup yet again uh, by a single player. But, you know, the team for, uh, for fourth dimension wasn't able to capitalize on that any further than the end of that. Yeah, yeah and obviously it's going to be match point here for Nocturnal. Uh, they do, do need to win the map. If we go to uh, to Assault and they draw, they're not going to get anywhere because, you know, you need to win the win three maps. First of three, not best of five. Yeah. And... Uh, so the fourth dimension still has as a, the the option to pull it back and to really uh, to, to really make the reverse sweep happen. At this point, though, it does seem like Nocturnal has a quite a big grasp on the series and they're not going to really let it go. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything can happen, and we've seen fourth dimension really pull out more more tailored strategies, especially on assault maps. They have been the maps that have been most out of line with the others. Uh, yeah. Seen a lot of Bastion being played, Symmetra's coming out, uh, depending on where you go. And it does look like they want to go to Hanamura, which has been the most uh, quintessential Symmetra map of late. Oh yeah, and Symmetra is, is an absolute beast, even after the, uh, the slight nerfs to the beam damage. Symmetra is uh, something that has been seeing a lot of playtime, both in the professional and in the amateur scene. So I am always very, very happy when she gets out there and we can see some, you know, interesting big IQ plays because those are the most fun things to do. Um, so uh, looking though, um, there was another bit of news that I wanted to share before we move on for oh. the people that don't know. Yes, uh, there is a... Uh, bunch of merchandise that we have set up at monkeybubble.store yes there is <laughs> and uh, uh you know i would say uh get uh, get get your stuff while it's hot there was some clockwork vendetta merch right there maybe still that... there <laughs> it is still there yeah maybe they can buy some coach no i'm just i'm just kidding i'm just kidding um so we are loading into hanamura here and remember it is now all up to the fourth dimension to try and get two equalizers. It's the first to three, and with a 2 0 lead for Nocturnal, they have their work cut out for them. So, chat, let me know. What do you think? Will Fourth Dimension be coming back? Will they find that alternate dimension where they are going out on top? Or is Nocturnal just saying goodnight to this match and moving on to the next one in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say they really need to find it, find the power from that fourth dimension to really make this happen because it does look a little bit dire for them right now. But like like I alluded to before, this is one of those map types that's just a little bit different. It's not just, oh, here's the uh, here's assault and, you know, it's, it's just another map. Like you see a lot of different same, similar things happening on, on Escort and Hybrid and Control. Uh, but when you get to Assault, this is really where you have to break a defense completely open. And you have to do it twice as well. So that's yeah. what really makes it difficult. Um, that being said, though, as the attackers, you do have that luxury, especially on the first point. You just go back into spawn and swap something up before you even attack. You can see what they have, swap it up, 
seal the deal. It does look like they're going to go with the almost a mirror match. No, it is going to be a mirror matchup. So they're going to yep. have Dollar, Ruby, Kumo, Doggo. They're all going to be on that Baptiste Mercy. And then we have the ba the Bastion, Farah, and of course, the Arista Sigma. Because what else would we see? Yeah, that's right. That is such a powerful tank combination, Arista Sigma. Um, and, you know, with, uh, with, with main tanks uh, of that quality, why wouldn't you? HM immediately finds a rocket that was fired by Eden. Eden takes Kumo down as well. Backbone, though, in a little bit of trouble, even though he's up there on this little perch. A lot of shielding for him right there, though. They can do whatever the hell he wants. And Eden is doing whatever the hell they want. Fees, the Fees Dog and Doggo's, uh, you know, immortality field immediately going down. That means fourth dimension immediately pulling back. Fourth Dimension has to go and try again, but they do have the Amplification Matrix. If they set it up correctly, they could just overpower the defense. Uh, that's what we, we, we used to see that before when Baptiste could use his edit. Um, they would set up a bunker on the defense with the Bastion, and then you would just charge your Baptiste ult quicker than the other team and just overpower them because you have more damage. It doesn't look like that's exactly what's going to happen here right now, but they may still do it. Yeah, that's right. And now once again, fourth dimension, trying to find a nice little angle to set up their fee stock right there. You know, just take over that high ground and make sure that you are the one holding all the cards. That's basically what this strategy is all about. But now the amplification matrix is coming out there for nocturnal fee stock trying to get even with that damage, but it is very hard to do. Backbone was already able to get three Dog, and Eden gets HM out of the sky yet again, but this fight is far from over. So let's see what fourth dimension can pull out of, uh, uh, pull out of that dimension. Come on, show us the pocket dimension stuff right there as Backbone takes down your backline slowly but surely. Yeah, I mean, he is, he is the backbone of that team, you know, you can make the joke, but right now we're still waiting for Eden to come back, so they do have that power advantage. They do have that barrage advantage as well, the power is in here, and Dala going absolutely low. We'll get healed up before the rotation happens, but it is nice to see that they're able to get through the choke and set this up nicely. Look at that, Feastock actually jumping to next of, uh, next to the shield and almost going down before even being proper set up. Backbone identified that and was able to pull a lot of damage in there, which means the high ground once again has to be, um, you know, basically abandoned by fourth dimension. HM still looking for that opening. Oh, firing the ultimate into that little window. That is not as much damage as they wanted, especially since Bacto went into tank form and gets HM and Kumo out of the sky. They are properly and truly entrenched into this one. Now, if that isn't a bunker cup, I don't know what is. Beastock with his own tank form can't find the same sort of value and is in trouble, even though the immortality field is up there. Backbone, Nipper, Hawk are just pushing in there, and Fourth Dimension push once again neutralized, and they have to go back from square one. Yeah, you really see it happening as well, where just H H HM was waiting. He was just floating behind the point, waiting to do that barrage, and you heard, you sort of saw the call come in as well from the team. Like, okay, now we go, and it was just too late because the mortality field was down initially, but as soon as they dropped, it basically came back up instantly. So it was. The, the, the cooldown was back up. And you could they could have abused it, but their rotation just took too long. Um, uh, right now though, oh, 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 oh. Aiden and Eden are having a nice little Top Gun moment. They were both in the danger zone, uh, danger zone, but HM pulling the short end of the stick right there. That was a beautiful fight. While the front still hasn't moved and been able to move up there. Now though, amplification matrix and a double shield. Eden from behind taking at least Beast Dog with him, but immediately goes down to Korn. Very well responded, right there. Uh, Korn just gets that counter kill, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The overtime is already ticking down. HM and Moda, though, getting some follow-up, and there's a nice barrage. This could possibly flip over in their favor. They have the numbers now, and they have the respawns coming back. Can they get that mercy kill? Nope, they can't get the res off, and now they're going to go for it. Yeah, they definitely are going for it, because that timer is ticking. Beast Dog with the double, Whoa. taking Ruby and Eden out of this. Overtime wake is still running. Second quarter is set up, so this should be a sure thing, and we will at least get to C point B from the side of the fourth dimension. 
and they finally managed to to, to click it all together to get that to get that opening pick or at least the late pick in a fight before that and make sure that they got back in time and use their numbers in spawn advantage because without that they would not have been able to take it and now they're coming into b with actually quite a few ultimates coming up definitely that supercharger and uh, uh and, and the valkyrie coming in don't know if that's going to be enough doggo is already down they might get to be able to get the res off but, but i think the mercy is too far away so they're gonna have to wait Yep, that is that, that is right. We'll see we'll see what is going to happen right there. Hota is looking for a bit of an opening. Dollar setting up there with the rest on the right side. It's gonna be so hard to break this. Like they have to force the fight to point. They have to make them come to point, otherwise they're just gonna get spammed down every single time. Yep. Maybe a, a, maybe HM can get up there with a barrage. They do take down Eden, that's a big part of their mobility and their damage mitigation. No, that is right. But well, we've seen that kind of stuff in earlier in earlier setups. He's not takes backbone, and uh, the uh, the supercharger and the immortality zone are out. So it looks like Fourth Dimension are doing just that. They're just forcing the fight right where they want it, right where they want to have it. And Nipper Dog in trouble, going down. Second quarter is already in there. Uh, sorry, second third, and it should be going towards the Fourth Dimension right there. And it is very well done right there. Backbone finds Feastock here by just sneaking around the sand and sneaky, sneaky backbone. But HM turns around and finishes the job. So, fourth dimension firmly in control of this. What just happened? They are just turning this around. HM still has an ultimate and launches it right now. The immortality zone is preventing a lot of damage right there. At least Yulo is going down. One of the supporters down, but Nipok with a double kill. Kumo and Korn already down, taking the triple for Hota. And it looks as if the Nocturnal slowly but surely can balance this out. Yulo, Yulo in trouble. No, only a little bit of a point left there for the nocturnals and they could be able to make this look at that wow it's just it, it i it feels almost unreal that they actually did that after how dominant sort of looked the whole the defense from nocturnal on a and then they're just able to get in there and it's just it kind of feels like nocturnal is dropping a few uh dropping a few balls here and there just eden trying to 1v1 of farm well, 1v2 basically a pharmacy and then dying on the side and there's just a few of these mispositions and these these overzealous plays happening here and there they think they, they think they can sort of pull it back and then clutch it out and it, the clutches aren't just coming as easily as they were in the previous maps so that might just be good preparation for dimension and also for dimension realizing that, that, that that's what's happening um, but it's definitely also a little bit on the part of Nocturnal. So Nocturnal has to now be serious about it again. Or they always had to be serious about it in the first place, of course. Um, but they really have to turn it back around into their into their direction in order to really win this map out. They At least they need to capture both points. If they capture both points, they'll definitely get another attempt. But they still need to do it. And they're going to have seven minutes to do so. So that should be plenty of time normally. But who knows? I mean, for the mention looking good so far on this map. <laughs> yeah, they are looking very good on this map, and I hope they can actually take this up because I would love to see a long rally from these two teams who are practically, you know, quite even. It is just that Nocturnal always seems to be able to execute their strategies a slight bit more. HM is ready and waiting for the Nocturnals to come out of that gate. So let's see what they're coming out of the gate with. Uh, in terms of the setup, looks pretty standard, but I do see a Widowmaker, so that could spell trouble for HM, who already was rather easy to hit by Eden when they were in the mirror match. Now, yeah, Eden just is gonna, this is the thing though, they're gonna keep triggering the, 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 the changes coming out from Nocturnal. Already 17, 18 seconds wasted, and now they're on the comp they want to run with. They're going to use that May wall to try and, and wall off the Bastion and then run into a different rotation. That's what's going to happen here. That looks like that's already going relatively well. Back and goes very low, gets healed back up. All of the damage everywhere. What's that wall? That May wall just saved half of the fourth dimension right there. And I don't know why they were doing that. Uh, but, you know, it could have been some form of weird strategy, but I don't think it worked in their favor at this point. HM has an ultimate, looking for targets right now. Going on the side, and there's the ultimate. Doesn't find anyone right there. Thanks to a great immortality field right 
set up by Dollar. You gotta pat yourself on the back for that one because that could have spelled trouble in a short notice. And now, Nocturnal moving in right on the point. Nocturnal on the point right now, but they do have to still be careful because everything is set up here. The Bastion, they're using the wall to separate the Bastion though. And that's a huge play because that means Feastock is down. The rest does come in though. The rest does come in and fourth dimension not done yet. Corn and Feastock immediately down by Backbone, who just has a very, very nice angle on that. HM can't do anything in the back line, has been frozen out by Ethan, and then just get executed there from the side. Backbone is firing on Doggo, and they're just waiting for that immortality zone to go for both supports to die. Now, very quick cap, you know, comparatively for Nocturnal, but still, point B is a lot harder to cap. It is a little harder to cap, and especially now that HM has gone over to the Symmetra, they're going to teleport that Bastion to the high ground. HM probably switching back to the far after that, or the May, as it seems. Uh, but they, they do have that same setup going on that Nocturnal had on the high ground as well. And uh, with the wall, they can be very, very annoying to what Nocturnal wants to do. Uh, Nocturnal knows where they are. They, they probably expected this anyways. Uh, but HM is going to try and separate them. Oh, oh, side. oh, oh. Backbone looking wow. around the corner. That shield was there and suddenly was gone. And so was he. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's a quick kill. And they don't have a mercy on the, on the attack. So that means they can't res it. And that's going to be so important. Kumo being able to res people up. And plus the respawn advantage. This could be... An incredible stall if they even manage to get close enough to the points that for the mention needs to start the stall in the first place. But right now, the main healing obviously comes out from Doggo. But if you've ever seen the Baptiste numbers, you know that that's plenty healing for a team. Oh yeah, that is plenty of healing for an entire team, especially in a bunker sort of situation. So Feastock just waiting for his target to come around that side, but he goes down because Backbone was able to set up behind that May wall, gets the immortality zone, and Feastock gets corn supercharger as well. So he has a, a lot of shooting gallery stuff going right in there. Feastock has been rest right there though. So, there's uh, exactly the value that you've been talking about. Ooh, doesn't look good for Hota though, as Backbone is still able to just find a target that he absolutely needs and wants to. He is not in any, you know, sort of pressure and can do whatever the hell he wants. Nibadog and Eden coming in from the other side now. And it is Yulo who is just making a lot of room for the team. While Korn can just set up and shut up immediately. Backbow now with the ultimate. Maybe set up a bit early right there as he needs to find some targets. Now tries to do so, but is under a lot of pressure, almost going down. Dollar here for his teammate, but cannot move anywhere closer. The oh, amplification matrix and the immortality field out. So a nice setup for the nocturnal. Nocturnal should be able to have this. 4v2 right there. The immortality zone is keeping both supports alive for the fourth dimension. But unless you have another dimension, that's not happening. Round two complete. And Nocturnal take it in. Yeah, they have gonna have three minutes to do another attack round, but that was such a shame. The biggest thing that happened that could have turned that fight around was the blizzard they had on the side of fourth dimension. But Nippahog ate it. The, the, it was it's not like a diva matrix. It's actually really hard to eat things with the Sigma uh, kinetic grasp and they ate the blizzard. If that blizzard has come out, half the point is evicted, maybe a freeze and kill some targets, and the entire fight turns around. But that one play, that one button, that nip a hog, that cooldown that they had, that really made it happen there for Nocturnal. Uh, I don't know what would have happened otherwise, but you know, they had a good control. They used the right abilities at the right time. You saw that Poor Dimension was trying to do it as well. Like both teams using the May walls and the freezes, and you really saw uh, as well that Beast Dog was really going around the around the side on that May. Actually, it was H, H, HM, I think. Yeah, HM was on the May, going around the side, trying to harass them from the back as well on the side of Nocturne. Yeah. So there was a lot going on, and Fourth Dimension was really doing a great job, but just that Blizzard Eat. I think that was really, that really cemented it for Nocturne. <laughs> that is right. So we'll see what is going to happen as these uh, teams swap sides yet again. Now, what I would really like to see is a Hota, um, you know, stepping it up a bit more. I mean, he's been throwing out shields left and right very well, uh, but, you know, comparing him to Nipahog, who has been making some plays, who has been uh, setting so, uh, setting up some flanks, throwing some great, great rocks left and right, uh, you know, he is a lot less, 
you know, visible uh, in these fights than uh, his counterpart on Team Nocturnal. But now, fourth dimension, moving up towards the choke. Eden fights Beast Dog immediately. So that is already a stalled first for approach here from fourth dimension, who have to pull back to retry. Back on Dino Kumo a little bit late there, but it just, it, it's going to take a lot of them to get in. I think they want to do the teleport to point strat. Um, I don't really know what else they would be doing. And if they can pull that off, that's actually a really great strat. Oh, they're going to try and teleport to the roof. It's even worse. Oh, yeah, they are. It. That is open field situation. Oh, oh, they oh, apparently, they get some a nice angle on there, but Doggo already going down backbone, saw what was happening, turned around, and made it down Eden with a double on Corn and HM. HM. I mean, they tried with the symmetric teleporter. They had to try something with a minute left, so I get it. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Uh, the roof teleport strat is a, is a relatively new one. It's not, uh, not a lot of lot, lot of teams want to pull it out. And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, it worked. The teleporter got there, but by the time they actually were going through the teleporter, they couldn't really do anything with their lives because they had basically already lost it. So that was a little bit of a shame. Uh, but then again, we could still go to a draw here. Three minutes is not a, it, it means still more, almost as much as you get on your normal first attempt. But if you get a good defense started and you get some ultimates up, you can really keep rolling through those ultimates, keep rotating through to properly hold it. And that's probably what Nocturnal is uh, is most afraid of, that that's going to happen to them. For the mention, though, they do have a, a pretty good task ahead of them. And, you know, if we, again, if they lose this, they'll be out of the tournament that Nocturnal would have won. Um, but let's hope for them that that's not the case and we get a draw and we go to a map four. Yeah, if that is the case, we are going to map four. So please... <laughs> Get it, get it, get get it done. Uh, fourth dimension. So fourth dimension on the defense right here. We don't see anything crazy from them. The setup is the same on the side of Nocturnal, though. We see Eden once again on that uh, on that May that has been doing some interesting things right there. But apparently they're going for a scout with the Widowmaker on the first shot. Last time HM almost got caught out by that. So let's see whether or not they've learned their lesson. It does look like they're gonna go in with a Widowmaker. No, Backbone and Eden are probably just gonna swap off soon. They don't think they're gonna run with this. They're just checking what the enemy is running and then adapting to it. So it looks like they're gonna just run in with the same thing they did last time with the May, with the with the Bastion again. Yeah, Ruby and it was very effective. Yeah, I mean, Ruby on the Ana did a good job with the engine as well last time. So if that comes out again, it's just gonna be very hard to get back home just jumping in there but fight the rock the get stunned almost immediately gets killed but was saved there by a very very good wall by Hulo. very very well set up right there but the Farah is still up in the air so Nibbethawk needs to make something happen or at least push them back far enough in order for Backbone to be able to set up Eden. Looking for a nice little right click, can't find it though. Now has to ice drop on top of the point. Set up on the bunker already now is the fourth dimension. Uh, but HM going down to a right click by Eden. Well done. Yeah, Eden just you know, been showing up on the May so far pretty well, not dying to the fire this time around. But you see this? this it's just this relation between the two high grounds on the point, the right side and the left side, and backbone going very low. Immortality field is there. The wall comes up. They try to get Beast Dog. The Beast Dog is alive. Really touch the point. Yeah, they do it in time. And now yeah. the fight's really gonna break out without the cooldown. Yeah, Matrix. So uh, you know, backbone can't go fully head to head on that one. They have to at least get a bit of an out angle. Now Dollar has its own ultimate, but they are all up in the air. I told Host to step it up, and it looks like they're doing it. But Immortality Field was able to save the team dollar once again there when he needs to be back down take takes hf never talk turns around and release all interesting gets hota as well and that as they say is that nocturnal wins takes it for the 3-0 and the first map gone yeah this the uh, first match of the day good match of the good good first match of the day in general but nocturnal did look to have that edge a little bit throughout that entire uh, entire endeavor so that means that, yeah, Nocturnal's gonna move on to the losers round. They're gonna face off against the winner of Indignation and Lunation Esports. Oh, wow. Um, Any predictions for that one? I, that's gonna be a hard one. I mean, we, we did have a seeding for this tournament. Indignation and Lunation Esports were the second and third seed, second and fifth seed, respectively. So Indignation should theoretically come out on top of that matchup. 
and then Nocturnal was the third seed, so they should theoretically then you know lose the indignation. But everything can be thrown out the window because our first seed, Clockwork Vendetta, is already out. Um, but obviously, we got to address the elephant in the room. It wasn't the same Clockwork Vendetta uh, full roster that also participated in Contenders and wasn't there in, for the last Invitational. So that is a little bit of a uh, uh, of, of a different story there. But that being said, a lot of these teams they've been going through a lot of the roster shuffles. We had a very long off season, so. Uh, it, it's very hard to see these teams in general. So the seeds, while they're there, they might not mean as much as we think they do. Right now, yeah. though, uh, yeah, Nocturnal going on. And they were looking very strong. Once again, had a, a, a very showing up very well. Yulo doing a great job on the main tank. Uh, Nipahawk, outstanding Sigma. Might have been the best Sigma that I've seen all weekend so far. Um, yeah, Dolla, Ruby showing up on the support as they should. And Backbone was the Backbone of the team um that being said though backbone wasn't over overshadowing eden it was a very even dps combo and they really they really did their did their thing together so uh we, one didn't work without the other uh, i'm trying to say there that is true and we have a bit of a surprise for you with us for the winning team from nocturnal is a dollar hello hello dollar how are you doing uh hello i'm uh, really good that is super good. Yeah, you you had a really good game right there. A couple of a uh, couple of very 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 good saves. Uh, I I gotta say. So um, you know, what was your what was your feeling here coming into fourth dimension? Uh, uh, after you know, what seems to be a uh, very turbulent first day for your team. Well, uh, I th I think we were like very confident, but like we were play uh, we have played like against four dimension like like two times in tourneys and like we lost uh, they're a really good team and it was unlucky that they had like four ringers this time but uh, i think i still think we performed good like we did our thing we were pretty confident and it was close game and, and uh, i think as i'm still saying four dimensions is really good team so like mm -hmm. props yeah. to them that's true that's true so uh i was asking uh, uh classy earlier um team indignation is playing whom right now Ludation Esports. Yeah, Ludation Esports. So if you had to uh, uh, to pick your next opponent, who would you prefer? Uh, I've been played against Indignation like multiple times and we're pretty confident like like against them playing. I I don't think we had played Ludation like at all, but so I, I can't really say. I would say Indignation because we don't haven't played against Ludation at all, but who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So looking at the uh, uh, at the right now, you are in the lower brackets. Will you be able to fight your way back to the top? Is that uh, uh, do you think that your team has what it takes to do that? Uh, I hope so. We are trying our best, and uh, uh, this is obviously the biggest tournament we have. Like we are gonna give it all, and we hope. Classy, you got a question for our guests here. I uh, I really don't know, actually don't have anything to ask. Well, the main thing I kind of want to ask is, um, uh, is I suppose how how are like the comps with the DPS? Do they really talk about a lot about like when one goes in and when the other does something, or is it just we smash and that's how it works? It's like like it's usually just like uh, a Doomfist player, the backbone like calls for pulls, you know, go mm -hmm. for a combo and things like that, and the Eden and the Reaper player. Like, you know, just calls for flanks, and if you, if you have do Doom, we just, you know, in tin, in tin, and then just uh, we call pull, and uh, we hope yeah. we kill someone. Yeah, well, I mean, it's working out so far, so I guess that's uh, that's the right comm structure, yeah. I mean, yes. don't over don't overcomplicate it, right? If it works, it works. You don't have yes. to fix anything that's not broken. Yes, uh, very true. Yeah, that's like really the only thing I really was wondering about, because uh, obviously we've seen a lot about the Orisa, Orisa pool combos. You know, you can combo with almost anything by now. Uh, so, so it's really nice to see that. Um, yeah, I think I had another one. Oh yeah, um, what is your favorite support to play right now? Uh, like I used to be like a flex support player. Like I was playing yeah. Zen, uh, Zen Moira, things like that. But then I like realized like I enjoy Lucio like more, like more mm -hmm. than uh, flex support characters. So I switched to main support, playing Lucio. Now I like picked up Baptiste and Mercy, but yeah. I'd say I still I still like Lucio, but Baptiste is like uh, like my second favorite at least. Yeah, Fair enough, yeah. makes sense. It's the mecha it's the mechanical and the the abilities that just really make it more more of a flexible and more fun support to player, I suppose. Uh, it's not just just a few buttons. It's uh, 
little bit more yeah. thinking as well. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, like, I mean, you saw, yeah, he showed up on the Lucio. It was a few sh missed shots there from Fizdok on uh, on Eichenwall, as I remember. Just like he was dancing around until he finally hit you. It took a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's right. And you saved your team a couple of times, you know, very good oh, yeah. clutch in, in uh, uh, you know, immortality fields right there on that uh, uh, on that Baptiste. Especially when HM looked like they uh, they were going to corner you and uh, and drop the ult up there, um, you know, very well done right there. I'm I'm for now. I would say I wish you and your team Nocturnal a very 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 good luck getting back in there because I think you have what it takes to go there. So I hope I'll see you a couple of times more over the over the next weekend. Yeah. yeah Monka W. Thanks though. Yeah, <laughs> I really appreciate. It. All right, fantastic. Bye. Good. Um, that's it for game one. So, man of class, what's the schedule going on? When are we going to go with the second? Well, we're going to go basically as soon as the second one is ready. Um, we should be going for the next game. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. When the teams are ready, next game should be near uh, Nieriki versus X Oblivione. Uh, a lot, a lot of people have been mispronouncing that name apparently. So I'm, I'm not even gonna. I'm trying, but it's, it's hard. Nuriki, I think it was Nuriki. Okay. Versus, uh, versus XW Viona, that's going to be our next game. Uh, that's the upper bracket uh, semifinals. And then after that, you have the upper bracket finals. And then, you know, that's how that's how the double elimination system works. So that's going to be our next game. Uh, should be on in... I mean, we were planning to do it on in 40 minutes, but we are really working with the schedule. So when the teams are ready, we're going to be ready. And uh, we'll bring you that game as soon as possible. Yes, we will. So for now, stay tuned. Get yourself a bit of a drink. We are going to get you some teams. And then we are going to get you some more Overwatch. So um, we will be back as soon as we can. For now, uh, you know, don't run away. And we will see you ASAP. This tournament was sponsored by Insights, a platform for gamers to learn and teach at the comfort of their own PC. Get your account today.